Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack, here with more Tomodachi Bros podcast. Today, I am joined by two of the Tomo Bros here with me. I have Mr. Clockwork Fiction once again. They pulled me away from fighting the streets once again. I don't know how they do it every single time, but they do. I did. I have to stop you from, from getting too good ere you, we lose you forever to the fighting game community and never see you again <laughs> in a cloud of Axe body spray and uncleanliness. So, and uh, also with us today is Mr. Noodle. Hello, hello. So, I am very pleased to let everyone know who, who have probably seen the past three episodes and been like, what, why is the podcast completely different? Well, it's not completely different. We are going to talk anime and nerd culture and all that good stuff because we're going to do our first presentation styled episode. So that should be fun. But before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about current events. That is Apple thinks you're an idiot and will pay $3,500 for hot garbage. Let's discuss. Did you know you could buy 58 copies of Street Fighter VI? <laughs> One for you. 57 for all of your friends and neighbors and start your own gaming tournament and possibly become famous on the internet for the per for the price before tax on this on this device just some food for thought just pointing that out there <laughs> i am just amazed that you bothered to do the calculations for that <laughs> well i'm on a computer and i have the calculator in front of me so i mean Not fair <laughs> fair fair point <laughs> so, yeah, they made these VR headsets. Now, now I'll be honest. I, as a gamer, I haven't actually weighed in on VR. Uh, so here is my weigh-in. VR is a stupid gimmick that keeps coming back from the dead like a zombie and will not stay dead, even though it is dumb and terrible. I despise VR. Uh, it barely functions for me because my eyes aren't exactly the same. Uh, what's the word for it? They're not the same strength. And the lenses in my glasses are two different shapes and sizes because of it. And so like VR, not only does it barely give me any sense of depth and immersion, it kind of gives me a headache after 30 minutes. And I don't that, like it. That is the one weakness of VR that I've heard for a lot of people is that it, it's a very niche market because people with glasses, uh, me not being one of them yet, uh, <laughs> that might change here in a bit. And you never know. Yeah. Uh the problem is that number one is even without uh, even without glasses, uh, motion sickness, the way it produces movement and how you're moving through stuff, if it's not calibrated properly on the dev side, can cause terrible motion sickness for a lot of people. Yep. Uh, if you have glasses, you might not even be able to wear the headset, depending on how the headset fits, because it might be their glass might be too big for it. And the and of course, as you said, the lens is di the lens differences and everything might be a problem too. Um, it's also very expensive, and also it, they don't account for the expense of the rig you need to do it too. I remember when I purchased uh, my first computer, or uh, built it myself and everything. Uh, help, of course, I had my, I had some help uh, build my first computer. Of course, I didn't mess anything up, but um, <clears throat> uh, it wouldn't run it. Like I bought a pretty beastly computer, but you needed like the current, current bleeding edge gen graphics card and everything to run it properly. It felt like at least I could be exasperating a little bit, but that uh, I was floored. I was like, oh my gosh, I can play Crisis on like 60 computers with this thing, <laughs> but I can't play a VR game. And with voxels, and you know, because of how much power this thing needs to eke out out to do what it needs to do that's bananas uh in this day and age it would be easier because computers have only gotten bigger uh the problem is that as technology evolves as we all know vr has evolved as well and it requires still a lot of juice to run it as but you can still you can still kind of get away with it depending on what you're actually trying to do um the other and the other one and i don't and i don't have substantial report on this one but it's the weirdest thing because i hear about it here and there and i can't find anything on it but for some reason i think this version and i don't know if other vr versions do this it shows a picture of your eyes on the outside of the thing not like a full picture but like so people can see what you're kind of looking 
in the headset, but they don't see what you're actually looking at or anything like that. But it's like the weirdest, like, I'm like, why would you want that? But do you want to make sure the person is still looking around and alive? Like, I can understand if you're just sitting in a chair and a dude's like cyberpunk dystopian ass just laying there as his brain is slowly melting into the virtual world. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, Jesus. there's people who genuinely <laughs> want that, you know? <laughs> and, and I have heard a lot of stories of VR helping people in certain ways. Um, I know some, I've heard of some people who wear them on planes who have bad fear of flying, who wear them to escape pretty much the fly aspect of it. And they, you know, watch videos of like that while in it and it, you know, gets them through and stuff like that. So I'm not saying VR is all bad, and, but the, the pen, but for gaming purposes, it is not the best. As in regards, unless you play like Beat Saber or something, which is still pretty cool and stuff like that. Yeah, but that game was built so with VR in mind. It's like, <laughs> yeah. hey guys, you want to buy Skyrim again for the 17th time, but this time you'll be nauseous after playing for an hour? Well, here's the VR version. It's a completely separate game. Pay us more money. Then well, maybe is- they're trying to convince people to finally stop playing Skyrim. Oh. That is a good point. <laughs> that is a solid point. I hadn't considered that angle. Touche, good sir. Touche. Well, they got to start shilling uh, Starfield that's been announced. So uh, it's been announced for a while, but they just showed off like actual gameplay and actual, you know, a bunch of stuff on it, which it looks fine. Um, they've actually uh, apparently squashed a rumor that a lot because they said they have like over like a thousand planets or something you can visit because this is a sci-fi right uh open world game uh they said that oh yeah most of it is not is the reason why it's taking so much because not uh, most of the worlds are not like pre-gen like i think i can't remember the name of the game off the top of my head it came out a while ago and it talked about like infinite worlds and everything because everything was pre-generated as you were going there or as you were flying through like the loading zone when you're warping, um, uh, yeah, uh, I lost my train of thought. I apologize. Let me try that again. Talking about um, No Man's Sky and all the procedurally yes. generated planets. Yeah. So apparently, most of these are going to be handcrafted. Most of them, not all of them. I don't know exactly what that means. As in, if some of them are pre-generated, some of them are not, or how they're going to do it. But I mean, it's better to have them handcrafted and actually put some thought into it and then pre-gen work with it pre-gen has gone all right in certain cases like when you're playing roguelikes and stuff like that and you can do some pretty cool stuff but i mean ha- running around a giant empty planet just farming resources with nothing really else to do does not sound like a very good time if you're uh, trying to play like an adventure rpg game if you're backing on no man's sky at this point my good man i'm gonna need to ask you to step outside because No Man's Sky has had an entire redemption arc. No, yeah. I no, I know it has. I'm talking about early No Man's Sky, and, and that's Before fair. But you got to remember, of- you're, you're you're comparing an indie game studio versus one of the biggest, most prolific game studios in the West. Yeah, this is also because of that. <laughs> that's that that's <sighs> like, yeah, I understand they have handicaps, but I mean, come on, they're still a big studio. I think No Man's that's Sky ran better than when <laughs> Skyrim first came out, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull teeth at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like the, the the thing that gets me is like the backtracking a little bit to where we started here is like the VR headset looks clunky. It's overpriced. It requires way too powerful hardware for the average Joe to use it. Like, who is this being marketed to? Who, who do they actually believe is going to buy this? <laughs> Probably people like Tortoise, the well, second of the of the brothers Ditaku, <laughs> who has way more money than sense and, and likes all of the, <laughs> the latest technology. I bet, I bet he'll love the shout out. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad he doesn't listen to this podcast. That's um, that's fair. <laughs> fair, fair point. No, that, that's. <laughs> Jutaku um, will love that, though. <laughs> yes, Jutaku will love that. Um, you guys don't yes. understand. There's actually a full bo- full bore Sentai team of siblings that Jutaku happens to be the oldest of. He's like the Red Ranger, basically. And, and and yeah, it's a lot. There's too many Pugums, is what I'm saying, and we have to work around them. Yes, there there are far too many Pugums. 
Um, but yes, I, I know that Mr. Tortoise is, is one of those fellows who, one, really likes Apple technology for some reason that oh, I, hope I do not understand. Um, yeah, it, it's been a terminal condition. <laughs> and two, he is has to be an early adopter of everything new so he got he got an oculus rift like first generation oculus rift Oof. um he he got a first generation apple watch which he then gave to me when he didn't when he when the second generation came out and he had to give that and <gasps> fair play to to apple on that particular thing that first generation apple watch i had it for almost 10 years it it crapped out like last month <laughs> um but yeah so i i have a feeling that individuals like him are kind of the the target demographic <laughs> um double income no kids probably tech bros who live in in california <laughs> I just want to also point out, I did math on another really uh, an ice game called King of the Castle, which requires a couple friends to play. Hey, it's five, it's four ninety nine. You buy one for yourself and six hundred and ninety eight copies, and you and six hundred and ninety eight random people on the internet, if you're a streamer or something, could be playing uh, Monarch versus uh, versus Nobles in this uh, in this streamer game. Um, and that's a lot of people who you could be playing with. <laughs> There's I have so to many say, better things to be buying with this money than this device is what I'm trying to point out. Now, there's so much more creative uses for this money than getting a next gen VR headset that you're going to use for maybe two to three things. One of them, hopefully, not being an SFW VR chat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to bring it up, but we all know that NSFW market is probably going to be the biggest mover of these things. Like, almost almost certainly. And, and the less said of that, the better, given that it's literally technology that can track where you're looking at any given time. I mean, there's so many... Okay, of all... I love cyberpunk as a genre. I think it's fascinating. But why do we have to live in the worst possible cyberpunk dystopia? We get the lame one. We don't have elves. We don't have magic. We don't have cool cyber limbs that just anyone can get on the street. No. This this timeline sucks. I want another one. <laughs> I feel that. No, I feel that. Actually, in my soul. That, that's a good segue. Because let's talk about transporting to another world, shall we? So... <laughs> Today, are you saying we're being isekai? Oh yes, we're getting isekai <laughs> hard because in the midst of the isekai boom, there was this little light novel series, and Ditaku saw it and said, "Snack would like this," and actually got me like at first, I think two volumes, uh, one Christmas a couple years ago, and that is how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom, and. I read it up till like volume nine or 10. And then due to economic pressure, I couldn't continue the series, but an anime adaptation was released not too long ago and dubbed into the English. And we were able to enjoy those. And today as a kind of a throwback slash new iteration of, of what we've been doing the past two seasons, season two coming soon, trademark restricted, all rights reserved LLC, uh, we are going to talk about this series in presentation format. Because you see, of the three of us, two of us have watched the anime, and one of us hasn't. Good clockwork, that's your, your moment to confess. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I have not seen it at all. I apologize. It were, I was so enamored. I was like, wow, there's a it's a really long, drawn-out pause right now. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's building up for something big. It's like, no, I'm waiting for you to oust yourself. Like, yes, like a very not. Mason villain. Unfortunately, uh, one of my other friends, all he watches and reads about is Isekai uh, anime and stuff like that. And, and some of them are fine. Um, the one I think he was watching recently... It's about a, a dude who power leveled himself so strong that he just is a, a god amongst the oh, uh, the hero is overpowered but cautious. 
something like that. That yeah. one's pretty funny. I actually, here's the thing. I, I'm going to do a quick defense because there's, there's going to be a lot of people who are immediately already in the comment section being like, oh my God, easy case. Six. And I get where you're getting, where you're coming from. The, the market is oversaturated, but here's the thing. It, it, it's just 90% of everything is crap. Okay. Just, just invoke the old adage and move on. But here's the thing. Some isekai is really, really good. Shield Hero is still one of my favorite light novel slash anime series of all. Uh, Shield Hero is just fantastic. And some of it's garbage. Some of it's garbage, yes. Some of it's absolute hot garbage. But some of it is good and worth defending. And I'd argue, on the whole, today's topic is good. But it's flawed, but it's flawed in a really interesting, nuanced way. And that's kind of why we wanted to talk about it. And I wanted to just preface this. I don't hate Isekai. It's just, yeah. it's, I've, I've been oversaturated with it. It's like when, it's like my crippling wow addiction that I've had for years <laughs> and years. At one point or another, I just kind of stopped playing because I was just like, I just not having fun with this anymore. Or, and they can't get me back into it because they just can't make it fun anymore. Or then they get released wow classic. And I was like, oh no, they're going to draw me in again. I played it for a bit and I was like, eh. I think I've gotten old enough at this point where it doesn't affect me as much anymore either way. So I'll go back to my other crippling addiction of uh, Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> I mean, fair. Fair. Uh, Noodle, why don't you get us rolling? I I've been doing most of the guiding thus far. Why don't you get us with a quick plot summary? Okay, well, the, the TLDR of this particular isekai is that the protagonist is a young man who is studying to be a civil servant in Japan. And then he gets magically summoned into another world that is being invaded by demons to help them solve their economic problems as a result of the demon's invasion. And he is very quickly made the king, and then solves all of their problems through use of quote-unquote Machiavellian policies, which is not actually book, what he mm -hmm. does. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did, I, did I mention the series is flawed? Because it is, but well, we'll get into it. Yes. So yes, that, that is the, the too-long didn't read too long, didn't watch of of the show. Um, and yeah, so as as this next says, it, it is a very flawed, very flawed series. I will admit, I enjoyed it um, in some ways, but there were a lot of glaring flaws that stuck out to me, in part because the protagonist is is pursuing a political science education in order to become a civil servant. And I have a political science education, and I am a civil servant. <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's rewind just a tiny little bit and get a little bit more specific. So, so here's the thing. Uh, enter, enter Soma Kazuya. Soma Kazuya is the lead character for this series and he is your kind of stock anime pro tag for this genre he's a young guy i think he's said to be 20 or 21 like really really early 20s just out of college kind of thing or like no he's in college i'm sorry i missed mm -hmm. uh and he basically has no living family and barely any friends because, I mean, obviously they want that to be the reader. So obviously you have no family or friends, you smelly axe, body spray, smelling scrub tart. So he gets drawn into a magical world. Now, one of the things that I actually kind of like is there is no catalyst on Soma's side. He wasn't reading a book. He wasn't messing around summoning demons. It literally just happens to him for no reason whatsoever on his side. As far as he's concerned, it's just this most random thing that's ever happened in his life. And I think like one of the funniest things in episode one is he gets summoned into like this tower where the ritual is being conducted. And one of the knights is just like, is anyone else surprised that this actually worked? <laughs> and Soma's just like, 
What is going on? Where am I? What is happening right now? So he meets the king, who is the one who basically ordered the ritual be performed. And the whole thing is he ends up in Elfrieden. And the, the thing with Elfrieden is it is your stock Mediterranean fantasy kingdom. Uh, it has no major strengths, no major weaknesses. It has some issues, but none so glaring as to not make the main character want to stay. And the king is this kind of doddering old fool who's not very smart and somehow is beloved by all, even though he's not smart and it's his fault that the economy sucks. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to begin with that. So Soma is pretty much made the king immediately. And I'm going to get more into this later because it's actually kind of an issue the story has, is that it makes no sense even after they explain why. And again, stick a pen in that, coming back to it. Then the king is like, hey, I don't want to be king. You should be king. You're the summoned hero. You're smart. You know what you're doing. And Kazuya realizes that he has magic powers, and his magic power is paperwork, because he's Japanese. And even outside of Japan, he is doomed to a life of pushing paper. And that's basically where the story starts. That, that, that's kind of episode one in a nutshell. <laughs> right there. Now, the thing that ends up happening next is also kind of one of the things I'm going to harp upon as we go, is the king is like, oh, well, to make your, your, your ascension more legit, you're going to be betrothed to my daughter, who conveniently happens to be a cute worst waifu. I mean, generic blonde anime girl, worst waifu. Uh, Leisha. And she shows up ready to protest. And then she's like, Hey, this like weird, lonely nerd is actually kind of hot. So I guess I'll stick around and see how this goes. <laughs> like That's the only rationale we're given. Like it's not, that's one of those weird things. It's like they don't have much chemistry and Leisha is, is totally worst waifu. I'm sorry. If she's your waifu, you have garbage taste. Just, I'm sorry, Oof, but it's true. It, it's true. She's, she is worst waifu. <laughs> Uh, speaking of fire by Mr. Snack. <laughs> like, I know it's like I'm, I'm kind of being a little harsh and it sounds like I hate this series. I don't hate this series. I actually like it, but I wanted it to be so much more. And again, we're getting to that. Uh, Soma begins this campaign. Uh, he's like, okay, if I don't cooperate, I'm going to be handed over to this other, this other country called the Grand Chaos Empire. The Grand Chaos Empire is the biggest, the oldest, and the most powerful nation on this continent. And they have an agreement where uh, Elfrieden has to pay them a certain amount it, because of this war pact. Now, as a political asterisk, the kingdom of Elfrieden didn't sign on to the pact. Everyone else did because there is the Demon Lord Kingdom in the far north. And the Demon Lord is approaching and slowly swallowing up you know, land after land, town after town, and he will indeed mess everyone up because demons can't speak and they're evil. It's like they're demons. I mean, what more do you want? So instead of being handed over to the Grand Chaos Empire, Soma basically is like, I can help. Let me do this. That's when he becomes king and starts doing a lot of paperwork. In fact, his magical ability is to move pens and channel his consciousness through them so he can be better at paperwork. Yes, that is his amazing ability. And the only time he actually uses it for action sequences is in the like postscript of the light novel, where he creates a like big human-sized doll that he sends with an adventuring party that ends up being kind of recurring B-plot characters. They show up in the anime a little bit towards the end, and so you will see them, but it's not a major story beat. It's really the secondary story. So Kazuya then d decides, like, we need the best and the brightest. So I'm going to put forth a, a call to all the kingdoms that if anyone in Elfrieden has a talent and is the best at their talent, we can put them to good use. So he gets a bunch of waifus and one really cool guy, and then one guy who is completely useless to the entire story. And I'm going to very quickly go over each of them. The first is Aisha, who is a dark elf. She is best waifu, and she is the, the muscle of the group. She is the best fighter. She beat everyone in a tournament of pure brute strength. She is very dumb and moe, and she is best waifu. I will fight you. 
it is it's true <laughs> uh, so the next one he got is poncho and poncho ends up becoming his minister of agriculture and he is the fat guy his whole thing is that he is fat uh but he is like this super cool bro who is just always very positive and very, very uh, kind of a go-getter. And he is the one who helps introduce foreign food into the kingdom. That, that's a thing we'll, we'll touch on in just a second, because it's actually super, super important. Uh, next is Tomoe, who is the obligatory anime lolly, because, of course, there's one. And her special ability is she can talk to animals. And then it turns out she can also talk to demons. Yeah, that's like a huge plot plot point that never gets resolved in the anime. <laughs> that doesn't come up. Uh, that's a thing. Um, I cannot remember his name. Uh, the the really, really, really boring guy who only acts as a soundboard. Um, do you remember who I'm talking about? Noodle, the tall guy with the dark hair. Hakuya. The- Hakuya. Yes, the yes. boring guy. He literally does nothing. He is completely worthless. He is supposed to be like, oh, I'm super smart, and I'm the strategist, and I'm always three steps ahead. He does nothing. He is completely useless. He, <laughs> he doesn't do anything other than be a soundboard for Soma. That's all he does. And convince the previous prime minister to step down almost immediately. Yeah, but by minister. being like, hey, you should step down. And the prime minister is like, oh, man, I guess I have to step down now. (laughs) That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And then there is uh, Juna. Juna is second best waifu. And she is the obligatory cheesecake. And like, she's just an idol. She, she, she's Japanese idol culture, but like older than normal. Um, she ends up being plot pivotal later on. And you guys think I might be being a little reductive, but I'm kind of not because like every single woman Soma meets falls in love with him. And then it's revealed that this world practices polygamy. So the harem route is a okay. Um, this is my personal beef and, and you guys can comment as you see fit. In a harem series, make the main character make up their mind. Just just like, oh my god, it is so trite. Just be like, oh, well, he just gets to date all of them. They're just, they're just cool with it. No, no. That doesn't happen. That's dumb. You're dumb. Uh-huh. What snack? This is <laughs> fantasy. <sighs> yes, I know the genre is called fantasy, but like, I don't mind if there's kind of like a harem-ish set up where there's like multiple possible bachelorettes, but like make the hero make up his mind. If not, you're, you're, you're the entire romance angle shouldn't be in the story because otherwise you're just wasting the reader's time because they're literally never going to act on it. And this, this series thinks that it's quote unquote fixing that problem, but it's like, Oh yeah, polygamy is encouraged and you just get to marry all of them. He literally marries them all. Except Tomoe, who is too young, and even he like rightfully points out, he's like, "No, that's that's weird. That that's bad. I'm not doing that." So uh, good on you, Soma, for having some standards. Um, yeah, that's a little weird. Not gonna lie. Anyway, so the whole thing is. All these characters are quickly introduced in, in the first like three episodes. Then it's kind of like, okay, here is situation, and here is what Soma does with it. So, like for example, he learns really early on that cotton is a cash crop in the kingdom of Elfrieden, and that most farmers have abandoned growing foodstuffs because cotton gets them more money. And his answer to this, oh, we can just give random stipends to, to, to farmers who, who stop growing cotton, even though it's, it's said that there's already an overabundance on the market because everyone is growing cotton because it is the cash crop. The, and it's like Soma just decides, Oh, I can just stop this famine. That's already been a couple years in the making, by just giving them money to be like, here, grow something different. Cause that's totally going to work. 
They're, they're totally not just going to take the money and just keep growing cotton or anything. I mean, do it all am I, I off base here? <laughs> I think you are off base there, but not because it's a stupid idea, but because they're not going to keep growing cotton. Um, they already wouldn't have been growing cotton if because he, the entire thing with that was that the lands that were actually invaded by the demon lord were where all of the cotton previously had been produced. And so then all of these other places started making cotton right. to adjust, and then that caused a glut in the market. And so as soon as prices for cotton flatlined because there was this glut in the market, then those farmers would naturally just start reverting to the crops that they were growing beforehand. It The market would have already been adjusting without his need of intervention. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. No, I mean, and that's a good there, there's a lot of things that are happening that that are like that. That it's just anyone with any understanding of of economics would understand that everything that he's doing is either a stupid idea or already would have been happening. Like, people would have stopped growing cotton because it wouldn't be making them any money, and then they'd be growing food stuff because the price of foods would have been shooting through the roof because of all of these refugees coming in. That naturally would have happened. Um, then there was this really stupid yep. idea of importing food, and then in order to artificially decrease the, the prices have all of the have the government buy all the food imports and then sell it to the citizens at a lower price which would have that that would have had massive 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 negative effects um and if you have if you want to understand how that happens the summary dear dear viewers um, or listeners, as the case may be, of a situation where such things did occur. Research the U.S. government's underground cheese bunkers. Those exist. Those, those exist. Those are real. Those are real. And those happened because the government decided after the Second World War that they were going to just buy up all the excess milk to keep the dairy market from crashing. And they were just going to buy up the excess milk. So people just started making more milk. And so they had to turn it into cheese and they just kept making more and more cheese. <laughs> I mean, I also heard of grain, of, uh, grain stores and everything like that too. Well, having <laughs> grain stores is a good thing to have it, it, as a strategic reserve for your nation to prevent against famine and things. That's, mm -hmm. but that's nothing new. Um, but what I'm, I'm saying is, is that would cause there to, he would be causing there to be an even wilder swing in the market. And that would mess things up even more. Just the government, interfering in the market like that never works out well when especially when it comes to food production dear lord oh yeah here's a, a here's a fun uh, bit of trivia for you guys during the great depression here in the united states the government's answer to people wanting prices to go down was to buy farms and ranches and slash and burn them all so that prices would continue to go up yeah, that look that's a real thing that happened. Look it up. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna let that one hang. Anyway. <laughs> the 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 thing is Soma's biggest issue is every solution he comes up with is top down. It, it, he does not care about 
anything except direct government interference. Like, for example, one of the big things, and this is a big thing, like catalyst for some of the biggest plot events in the entire story kind of big thing, is he realizes there is a big group of nobles who are like have Ill- illegally gained wealth, they are stealing, they are pillaging basically, and he's like, okay, I am going to settle the government's outstanding debts by just arresting and just taking it all with absolutely no trial or investigations at all. I'm just going to do this. And literally nobody at all is like, wait, isn't this a massive, massive overstep that for a kingdom that already has its military? Okay, here's a weird thing you have to understand about how this world works. The king has the royal guard. That is the the force that the king is commander-in-chief over. But as a compromise to the demi-human races, the army, navy, and air force, there is an air force in this world, roll with it, is broken up into dukedoms, basically. And there are basically three warlords who oversee the army, the navy, and the air force. And there's uh, Castro Vargas who is in charge of the Air Force. He is this dragon guy uh, who is this really hot-blooded, ah, oh, it's honor, you know, death before dishonor. Uh, there's Excel Walter, who is the obligatory ara-ara. And there is, uh, what was his name? Uh, Carmine, George Carmine, the Lion Man, who is the head of the army. Now, the whole thing... With them, is it was supposed to be a balance of power. The humans only have so much power under the king, so the demi-human races have their sword to counterbalance that in the event the humans ever did something really super racist against them. So that was like their way of maintaining power. Soma's response to this is to basically be like, hey, fall in line, or I kill you all. And Excel is just like, yeah, you're hot, so I say yes. And Carmine, for basically no reason is just like, no, I don't like you. And because he and Vargas are friends, the air force and the army rebel against the empire, which is like the, the first major conflict of the anime and the, 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 the light novels. And, um, what's a nice way <laughs> to describe what happened to this happens in real life. Um, massive, massive, massive bloody civil war is what would have happened in the context of the story, it's like a few small skirmishes here and there. Um, Noodle, your take. Well, I want to interject yeah. for just a second, uh, if I can. What? It's like, I understand this is fantasy. What kind of Air Force are we talking Like, when I picture, like, Isakai fantasy, they, okay. Yeah, they got dragons. Like, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I picture, when I picture dragons. Isakai fantasy, I'm thinking, like, <laughs> medieval, you know, medieval-ish, like, you know, Maybe like, I mean, if we well, want to go a little is. crazy, we get it is. like kind of the Warcraft area of like Zeppelin balloons with guns on them and stuff like that, or what have you. Um, <laughs> less okay. That's actually. I'm glad you said that because that's actually kind of relevant. Guns and steam engines never developed in this world. Yeah, because there's magic. Because there's magic, you don't need steam yeah. engines. You just use magic. They've got and like you literal can, like, move ships around. Like, World War Two style or like early. Uh, they, they've got like early ironclad battleships, but they don't have steam engines. They're just like literally pulled by sea serpents. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, like, technology did advance, but it did so in really weird ways. And I actually, I credit the series. This is something I think that was actually really clever because it's like technology did keep evolving, but in a different way because they have magic to consider. And I think that was actually a really clever story beat. I think that's to the story's credit overall. Um, so yeah, like they have armored ships because metallurgy is a thing. Just you know, why invent gunpowder when about, you can point your finger and just shoot fire? It's like guns are pointless. Sacrificing those majors to the god emperor of mankind. Oh wait, wrong setting. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That doesn't really come up. So, so, so it's more like, and in terms of the air force, think fire know, emblem more than Warcraft. Warcraft. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Well, no, I, I get it. Well, I was because uh, I, I, I know mean, what you I mean. mean. Flying dragon, air force. That's pretty cool. That's you know, I, I get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's actually, it's like I said, it's a very cool way to explain something that would otherwise be a little, uh, a little more stifled. There wouldn't be an air yes. force basically, but, if not for that. Yeah, it really politically, none of this stuff should have happened the way that it did. <laughs> like from a logical perspective of assuming that the humans in this world and the various you know, human intelligence species engage at all like the humans of our world. Um, you have this complete nobody appear out of nowhere, literally plucked from another world. And then the king abdicates his throne, marries off his daughter to this person, and then this person just like completely upends the government and replaces it with all of these these brand new people um yeah the, frankly these these dukes really all of them would have immediately rebelled in an incredibly bloody civil war um probably contending with each other in in exchange you know to try and end up with one of them on the throne replacing the old monarchy. Or, you know, you'd probably have a faction of, and you probably even have a faction of the Royal Guard engaging in the Civil War trying to return the old king to power, because clearly he didn't want to rebel, or he didn't want to abdicate, and the, you know, princess is only engaged to the new king as part of this new king's attempt to appear somewhat legitimate and have you know some continuation of the the legitimate monarch line in in his coup it's like a it yep. really that would have been like the immediate thing none of his earlier reforms would have happened they're just like oh there's just some rando is the new king what no um that is not how we do it. Especially, like I said, Albert uh, Albert L. Frieden, the previous king, was popular. Oh, yeah. The people loved they, him. It, <laughs> it, it really, that made, would have made no sense. And if, if the protagonist was half as intelligent as he is portrayed as, he would have immediately, if the king had even tried to do that shit, he would have just immediately shut him down and been like, no, this is going to cause problems. You know, appoint me as, a, you know, minister of the interior or something, whatever. That's like the most that we could do. And then I'll tell you, yeah. you know, what you should be doing. I'll help advise you. But we don't want to do that because then that's going to basically... The moment that that happens, the fecal matter is going to hit the oscillating unit and it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it completely upsets the power balance this world has. Like It destroys a central tenet of the world building because the entire point was the humans and the demi-humans had had like really, really troubled past. And they only go into it in passing, but like there were wars, there was bad stuff, and, and to fix it, that's why the king is a human, because that's the majority of the people in this kingdom, but the demi-humans control the military, so they have might too. That way, everything is balanced, as all things should be, and then the king screws everything up. Now again, we're going to get to that. <laughs> when we get to the spoiler section, we're going to dig into that. But this is really dumb. So already kind of a lot of things are already kind of falling apart and we haven't left the first book yet. <laughs> so war happens. And Soma, he's kind of a garbage strategist. Like the book builds him up as, as being like, oh, it looks like he's a little like sluggish, but no, he's really like three steps at no, he has no idea what he's doing, and it's obvious because a lot of the things he chooses to do hinge a lot on dumb luck. There's a bit where he stalls out enemy forces by having the mayor basically just like keep begging for more time as he's moving an entire army behind the scenes. And that sounds very, very silly. 
It is. <laughs> it is. Like, the, the, okay, there's this kingdom, the Principality of Amadonia, and they are really, really, really invasion happy, which makes no sense because remember, the Grand Chaos Empire has a treaty with every nation except El Frieden and the Demon Lord's domain. And it says that if you are part of this pact, you're not invading other countries to change boundaries. That's illegal right now. You can't do that. But the Amadonians' rationale is, well, that was under the old king. Old king's not in power. This new Soma guy is king. We can invade. It's legitimate. And even though there's no way the Grand Chaos Empire is going to go for this, by the way, <laughs> he does it anyway and invades. <laughs> and Soma gets by by so much dumb luck. All of his plans are these things that were like, these are terribly orchestrated plans. Any one of the things that he chose to do during the Amadonian occupation basically could have backfired instantaneously had the stars not aligned in his favor. Now, I get it. Shown an anime pro tag, the stars always align in their favor. Fine, but this is supposed to be a realist hero. That's in the title. And we're still struggling under this. So this causes a lot of issues. And... and <laughs> I can't. It, I'll it ultimately I can't. comes down to one of the earlier problems that that we established with things that all of the solutions to the problem are very top down, and so it's it's the same thing with the conflict. It's he has to be at the center. He has to be in charge and the mastermind behind everything. And it, yeah, it it just. No one person is that smart. As you say, it reminds. I felt like the. Uh, I feel like it would have been a better storyline if he played a little bit of Mountain Blade Warband, and the Alice's Alice's strategy was what he learned from playing that game or something like that. At that point, <laughs> like, see, I, I would have accepted that to some extent. But here's the thing: Soma has access to too much information way too conveniently. Now there is some attempt at justification. Now, during this war, like I said, Vargas and Carmine are out and out against the king. Now, Excel, the leader of the Navy, kind of claims a stance of neutrality. She doesn't really want to get involved, but that's not 100% true. During the time, Juna, her granddaughter, is in his court. He's, she is there with Soma, basically drip-feeding him information about all the military's movements. That's really convenient. <laughs> like, she did it specifically so XL could keep tabs on this new king, see what he's actually like, and see if he's up to snuff. Because she is kind of in on the conspiracy. Again, pen in that. We'll talk about it later. But that is such a convenient ace to have up your sleeve that it really undermines things. Because basically it means Soma is way too pretty to way too much, and he doesn't have, like, he doesn't have these generals. He doesn't have these tacticians. He has Kazuya and like one of the random knights from the Royal Guard. I don't think he's even anyone in any particular rank. He just kind of shows up and joins the main cast. I don't remember his name, I'll be honest. The <laughs> he one didn't leave an impression on knight. me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the guy who's like, oh, how dare you talk to the king like that? And Soma's just like, nah, it's cool, fam. And, and like, that, that's the thing, like Soma... <laughs> Soma uh, struggles with an old adage about being in Rome and doing what the Romans do, because he flouts protocol even in the most like minute ways. These people would have ousted him within like a week, <laughs> because they're just like, this man knows nothing of our customs and culture. How could he possibly deign to lead us? Well, that doesn't come up. <laughs> Instead, they're just kind of like, yeah, okay, the king says it's cool, so it's, it's cool, I guess. And so the anime, like I said, details, like, I think the first six or seven novels and they get into the civil war part. And what ends up happening there is Soma just like plays them like a fiddle, mostly again, because XL is on his side the entire time. And he, he, he there are some moments where he is genuinely cool. I'll give him that. He decides, hey, we have these like cool iron warships. I can just make a tank out of these things and have it like pulled by dragons. So he does, and he fires the biggest gun they have 
at the, on the the tower where the leader of the Air Force lives. It just blows it away. And now he wasn't in there at the time, so he didn't die. But it was show of force that actually brought him to heal. And I was like, okay, it's kind of dumb, but that was kind of cool feel at the like, same time. At least from as you're explaining it, there's like there doesn't seem to be a lot of time passing between. Like I, I'm assuming because of how uh, from if, if all this is going on from what one book or from one of the. This the entire Civil War arc takes up the first, I think, five volumes, as I recall. Again, I don't have them on hand, so I can't cite that source. But it, it goes over a while, and there is in the anime. It's kind of like no real indication of how much time is passing, but it's like implied that there are several days between some of these events. And we're not really going in chronological order. We're kind of hitting the, the major beats of the story. Uh, but the novel is a little bit better. Like, oh, well, it was several weeks before this message arrived and, and stuff like that. But it's all very, like, by the way-ish because it's a shonen series. So they're they're trying to That's keep the pace fairly just, brisk. I feel like there should have been some kind of breakups or some kind of, like, mini, at least, like, mini kind of, like, time-passing arcs or something like that. Kind of show it. <laughs> to be fair. To, to be fair. To, there is some time be fair, passing. He, like, get, builds the... He builds an entirely new port city over the course of the Civil War arc, which, I mean, granted, he has very powerful Earth mages that help him do that, but still, he builds an entire port city. Yeah, like a huge one that becomes a huge central hub of trade. And I think in the novel, it took them like a month and some change. And again, magic expedites things, and Fine, I'll bite that lure a little bit. But yeah, uh, there is some time passing. It's not real clear. Again, this is a shonen action rom com series. So there is a little bit of flimsy justification for certain things. Now, because like during all this, there are times where there's like downtime episodes where like there's one where he goes in disguise to like see what the life of the everyday man is like in his own country. Which is one of the first things he does in his in his defense. He does that fairly early on. Um, once he kind of researches some of the laws and some of the customs and stuff, he goes and, and sees how the people do their business during the day. And the, there is those there are those moments where it's broken down a little bit more and they talk about the culture and stuff. But like generally speaking, it's medieval Europe. And that's all you really need to know. <laughs> like a lot of those episodes aren't important to the plot per se. Uh, those are kind of the more comedic bits where they're, they're kind of like allowed to, to have a little bit more fun with it. And to be fair, it, it's enjoyable. Like th th there is good character interaction. There's some pretty good comedy. It's, it's about what you would expect. Like you no know, awkward flirting between early 20 sums who have no social experience. It's like, it's the, mm -hmm. it's, it's shown in anime. <laughs> yes. But, like, there's some heart to it. There's some heart to it. It's fairly wholesome. And I'm not going to bag on it too hard in that respect. But again, this is a realist hero. <laughs> Soma is anything but, especially because he constantly cites the work of Machiavelli, and specifically the prince, and then doesn't really do a very good job <laughs> of acting on his own advice. Uh, like uh, the, the Noodle Noodle uh, has much Noodle words. has words. Noodle has much words because as Proceed. as earlier stated, Noodle has an education in political science and political philosophy. Noodle has read The Prince many times. Noodle has also read the extended other works by Niccolo Machiavelli, including the work that he really wanted to be his magnum opus, The Discourses on Livy, which really more people should read. Um, and he quotes the prince, and he acts like people think people who have read The Prince should be. The Prince gets a 
bad rap, I think, by a lot of people who didn't read it and a lot of people who are moral busybodying about it. Um, and I say that full well as as someone who is a religious person and follows religious the 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 morals of Christendom um as much as is humanly possible. Um but yeah it its reputation kind of got cemented very early on because it was the first there's a reason that Niccolo Machiavelli is called the father of political science because he took political science and he took it from being political philosophy to being political science and that it went from being here's how everything should be and Niccolo Machiavelli's like yeah that's how it would be in a perfect world but perfect worlds in another zip code let's look at how things are in this world um and and really be realistic about how the world is and let's go from there and deal with things in this dirty nasty brutish situation that we live in and yes so yes there are some genuinely nasty brutish and cruel things that he advises in those world in those words but there's also things like the the very oft there is very the very very oft misquoted line from the prince that it is better to be feared than to be loved which is itself a, mi- a misquote it's it's a missummarization of things but that's missing an awful lot of context that that Machiavelli's basically going into a long rant about whether or not it's better to spend more money on public works than on defense. And it's not like, oh, I want my people to fear. Do I, is it better if my citizens fear or love me? It's no. Is it better if your citizens love you or if your the people outside of your country fear you? And his conclusion is, well, it would be great if you could do both, but resources are finite. So it's better if you are feared by your people than, you know, are feared by your, your enemies than loved by your people, because at least then your people are safe and you're not being invaded. He, he's basically arguing it's better to spend extra money on public defense than on welfare programs. <laughs> that that's the crux of that. But people take that out of context. Um which is actually kind of funny as Soma says something very similar at the very start of the series and then doesn't actually <laughs> act on it. <laughs> yes, so, whoops uh, indeed. Whoops. But yes, long tangent about people very much misattributing things to Machiavelli. And if you want, a, one must recall that one, the Prince was published after Machiavelli's was dead and that it was a letter that he never intended to publish. He, it was given specifically to the Medici family, which had just taken over his homeland, mind you, he spent most of his life working for a republic government. All of his other works talk about how the Roman Republic was the greatest political project ever. He talked about how the division of power within a government is the most important thing that needs to happen in order to prevent corruption to prevent excess and, and, and tyranny, all of these things. A, a lot of the foundations of what are the American Republic and all of the subsequent modern constitutional republics in the West are based off of Machiavelli's ideas in the discourses on Livy. <laughs> He gets a very bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just selling it a bit. But yeah. And 
at at this point, um, at this point, I, I do want to mm-hmm. weigh in on the series as a whole. Mm-hmm. And Noodle, you can you can definitely follow up with me, and then we'll shift to the spoiler segment after that. Because I want to be clear that while I have a lot of beefs with how the story is portrayed, I think people should watch the anime. Uh, and the reason being is it's the books are they're light novels; they're not huge reads. But there is a lot of fluff that the anime kind of trims down for brevity, and I think it is better paced for it. As a whole, it's a good, competent shonen series that kind of knows that it's a fan service heavy, simple story being told and, and kind of built up as more than it actually is. It is a shonen action rom com isekai story, and it's interesting. And if you don't overanalyze it the way we are, but I mean, it's mostly because I, I do wish it was more. I do wish there was this concept of an isekai story where the world is rescued because someone's an econ major and, and makes good decisions for the welfare of a nation is a fascinating idea that is really fertile soil that has not been cultivated the way lots of other isekai premises have. Well, on the whole, it's entertaining. It's fun. It won't take up too much of your time because it's only one season and it covers the better part of the novels. There's only 10 novels total, I believe. And of that, the anime covers more than the first half. Is it fun? Yes, it's very fun. There are good waifus. You look like waifus, you will find one here. Is it a little stock? Is it really bad politics? Yes. (laughs) I think we've made that clear in the last hour Mm -hmm. that the politics are not so good. Uh, but as a series, it's good. It's fun. It's entertaining. Turn your brain off. Enjoy it. It's fun. Noodle, I yeah, pass the torch to you. But much like the snack, I know that a lot of the things that I will say could come across like me saying it's a bad series. It's it's not a bad series. It's it's a turn your brain off and and enjoy series. Um, because yeah, there's a lot of problems that people who overanalyze things like me, especially people who apparently know more than the writer about certain subjects, including this, uh, like me, would just point out and be like, oh, no, there's no way that that could work. Why? Um, but yeah, it, it, you can turn your brain off and, and enjoy it. And that is certainly a thing. And Zach, I would like to point out that if you want a story about an an isekai protagonist who goes into a fantasy world and then completely changes it using his knowledge um his his advanced his advanced knowledge um that story has been done it was done a hundred years ago by mark twain it's called the connecticut yankee in king arthur's court <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Read a book, kids. Also, I was I, I misspoke. There are 10 volumes of the manga, which the 10th volume will be released in April. Well, it was released in April 2023. There are 17 light novels. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that I was mistaken in saying that. Uh, that said, uh, we are now going to open the floor real quick to clockwork for any questions and clarifications before we get into the spoilers. Uh, I don't have a ton of questions. I mean, from what you explained the uh, for what you have explained sounded pretty um I mean, bog standard from what I'm from what I would uh, expect it to be. I'm not <laughs> saying it's bad because I've never seen it. I'm not going to say something's bad or something I've never seen before, but it is not something that I sound like i would put a lot of attention to unfortunately oh uh, like i said i've i am east i have been east i have been no, east no, to death at this point so it's it's harder for me to kind of get into those at one another <clears throat> so yeah, to, to kind of watch them at one point or another i think the other one my my other friend has been watching was the one where apparently is a really powerful general leaves his oh no wait that's not east guy though that's something different never mind so many different dang animes he's been watching and they god he they like i don't know he's he has like a giant list of stuff that he's been watching um there was another one that he was watching at one point though um 
See, I have to personally say that my the pinnacle of isekais that I have seen, and I will fully admit that I've not delved that deeply into the isekai genre as a whole, but the pinnacle is Log Horizon, and I will fight anyone who says otherwise. <laughs> that is an excellent Because, choice. yes, the author actually thinks about things, and there's consequences to people's actions and they behave like logical and and rational and but also emotional human beings it's it's weird but not not only that uh the, the main character thinks about what he's doing <laughs> before he does it and Maybe overthinks everything he does, and Log Horizon is fantastic. We talked about that in a previous episode. You guys, did, you know, wait, down. was this episode in the apocryphal? Uh, that is actually in season. <laughs> was it in season, season one and not the was, missing season? Well, I'm not totally checking my playlists right now <laughs> to verify this. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk! Hang on. I totally know the answer, and I'm not stalling for time at all. Yes, it is. It's episode nine of season one. <laughs> you jerk. I honestly didn't remember that myself, so I just uh, want to confirm. <laughs> yes, it, it, it is. Like you guys have no idea how weird our our production schedule really is. <laughs> so yes, it's the episode nine, and it's really good because Log Horizon is fantastic. So. Uh, at this point, we're going to shift gears. Cog, if you would be so kind as to drop the spoiler audio here for us, please, my good man. Warning. It is a non-stop spoiler onslaught going forward. Abandon all pretenses ye who enter here. Thank you. We are now in the spoiler segment. You guys have been warned. So... Let's talk about more about the story and some of those pins that I have asked for you to stick it into. <laughs> and that was good grammar. And uh, we're going to get into where the anime goes, why the anime goes, and why a lot of the story beats make no sense. So I'll start. So Carmine deliberately rebelled against the kingdom because he set his little dukedom up as a safe haven for those aforementioned pesky, corrupt, evil nobles who are totally stealing and doing other bad things, even though you never see them or have their, their crimes enumerated upon you guys. For realsies, though, they're, they're totally the bad guys, though. Take our word for it. Uh, he opened his doors to them and allowed them into his dukedom, specifically so he could round up the ones Soma could not catch in the dumbest way humanly possible. He, he uses himself as Fall Guy to take the, 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 the bad nobles that Soma couldn't catch himself and capture them, and then use his quote-unquote betrayal of the new king, which again would have made perfect sense in context, and all the dukes would have rebelled, like Noodle said. But no, for reals. He's, he, and then he quote-unquote dies when given some quote-unquote poisoned wine and is totally not at all the leader of Soma's personal spy network wearing a mask, you guys. I mean, and that's ridiculous. I mean, that's as crazy as saying that Clark Kent is Superman wearing glasses. I mean, that's just not true. Like, one of them is wearing glasses. It's obviously a different guy. <laughs> And it goes from there. It goes from there. Oh, okay, how do I even begin to explain this? Okay, so here's the thing. Magic in this world is broken up by element. Most people have earth, water, wind, or fire magic, but there are other families, including healing magic, which is its own thing. There's light magic, which is its own thing. And there's dark magic. But don't think of dark magic like it is in Fire Emblem, where you're throwing like liquid shadow around. Dark magic in this world is magic that isn't defined by any other category. It's more like unknown magic. And we're told like really early that the queen of the kingdom uses dark type magic, but no one knows what it is. 
Do you want me to explain this, or do you want to explain this noodle? Oh, this no, part by all really means, continue. Off. You're doing an excellent job so far. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you're liking my summary, because I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying not to go as long as an anime series to explain this, because this is, goes really off the rails. Okay, so, get ready. Because uh, Elisha, the queen, the, the queen of the kingdom, has dark-type magic, and we learn what it is in the very last episode of the anime. And it turns out she has basically psychic powers. She can predict the future pretty much the same way that Doctor Strange does in Infinity War. And the whole thing was in she. <laughs> I'm trying to describe this as best I can because this, this explanation <laughs> goes so far off the rails. She saw this timeline or lived this timeline. She makes it sound like she lived it. The way the novel describes it is she lived it, where Soma shows up and the king is like, hey, you're really smart. You should be the, the new prime minister. So the old prime minister, who is old and dumb, steps down because the king's like, hey, you should step down. And the prime minister's like, oh, man, not again for the first time. And the the... Soma becomes prime minister. And so he's basically putting forth all these ideas and how to fix all these issues. Da da da, everyone is good. And then it just doesn't. And they get invaded. I forget if it's Amadonia or the Demon Lord Empire, because this moment is only on screen for like 10 minutes. And someone invades and they just get wiped out. And the whole thing, the way it gets explained, is because Soma could not directly implement all of his amazing, brilliant, perfect ideas. He is unable to prepare for the invasion. The invasion happens and they, they all die. Everyone just dies. And the queen is like, yeah, this timeline sucks. Think I'm going to find me another one and goes back and convinces her husband, the king who married into the Royal family, by the way, he is the one who married. She was the actual princess of the kingdom before. So she goes back and she's like, hey, by the way, if you retain king, king status, you die. And everyone dies and game over. So if you let Soma become king, there is some non-zero chance that he will be able to fix the situation and everything will be better. And the king just accepts this at face value and is like, yeah, okay, that seems legit. And without telling or explaining this, without giving anyone any context at all, especially the people who needed it the most, he just does. He just goes with it and doesn't tell anyone, including Soma himself. <laughs> he just dumps this. And we get this in an info dump. This is the last episode of the anime, by the way. If you're really intrigued in the story thus far, you are SOL. <laughs> because that just happens. And they're like, oh, everything up to this point has happened at least once before, if not multiple times, because apparently this is just something the queen can do on a whim. Which ultimately <laughs> then leads to the question of, if this is her magical power and she's had this magical power and she can just do this whenever she wants, how did the situation get to this point to begin with? How did the situation get so dire that they needed this, <laughs> you know, Hail Mary shot to, to, which they didn't even think would work. There were sorcerers in the kingdom who were like, oh, the, the whole summoning hero thing, that's literally only ever happened once in our entire history, and the spell has failed every single time since. It just doesn't work. And so, like, that's why at the first episode, the guard's like, is anyone else surprised this actually worked? Because like, they were surprised. The spell was a dud. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yeah, so... <laughs> It, it it just makes no sense. It just, like, completely upends everything. It, yes. <laughs> now I'm getting just as heated as the snack. Uh, I was also going to say, the, premi the premise of, <laughs> you know, having this, uh, not omnipotent, that's not the word I'm looking for, but this uh, clairvoyance, that's the word I'm looking for. And, like, I understand if they want to put limits to it, like, you get, like, like they can look at, like, you know, five or ten futures. Only one is correct. You don't know which one it is. Uh, and like, you know, you make a couple of guesses, a couple of them are wrong. You make a couple of guesses, a couple of them are right. You know, sometimes things can get bad, sometimes things can get better. It kind of depends on, you know, the scope of your power. But without a real gauge of what happened, it, it sounds like it was more like just Hail Marys being thrown until something 
thankfully stuck apparently. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does come across like yeah. the queen's plan is to just keep throwing shit at the wall and, and eventually something's gonna stick. <laughs> yeah, she she's she's literally just like, oh, I can just keep going back and, and again and again and again until I get this right. And it all hinges on Soma for some reason. She, she doesn't even really ever explain why. Instead of seeing what Soma could do and just telling Albert to do that, <laughs> she just voices it all on this like 20-something kid who's <laughs> like, wow, I'm dating oh. myself. I'm calling 20-something <laughs> a kid. Good lord. <laughs> oh, I'm an old man. I just threw my hip out. Oh, jeez. Like, she, she's, she pins everything on him, though. Like, everything is his problem now. And she's just like, oh, yeah, I can, I can literally just do this. And apparently she can just do this an infinite number of times if needed. <laughs> like, why? Like, like Noodle said, like, if you could do this, why did this happen in the first place? Like, this plot twist was designed to justify Soma's ascension to power, but it just raises thing, so many I more questions. Uh, at least, kind of, <laughs> put as a as a trope, but at least something that could you know answer the question of why it, and not leave this giant gaping hole is like, hey, some of these futures I'm looking at, I can't like see, or I'm not getting the same amount of vision. Something is blocking my, you know, some some power is blocking my ability to see all the potentials or something like that, or you know, something or like. <laughs> Yeah, like also, gives some ambiguity. Okay, okay. this is an, ent- an entirely different thing, but it's just like the questions that immediately come up that just like butterfly out of this thing. They're talk- they've been talking about how they're like, humanity is losing the war with the demon, the, de- the, the demon lord, who is, you know, magically invaded, and they're, yes. they're losing this war. But one of the heads of state for this alliance against yes. the demon prince the, the the demon lord is literally a clan variant who can go back in time and tell you this is the shit that happened okay and this is how it turned out we should do something else okay how are they losing this war <laughs> how, i have not actually considered that up till now that is an excellent point general that literally is like all right guys we tried this, this, and this, and it didn't work. And they, we know exactly how many, I know exactly how many, you know, demons they have in this area because turns out they've got an ambush force of like 5,000 dudes over there. So let's get them to, you know, think that they've got the ambush and then we'll ambush their ambush people and kill them all. And then it'll just like wipe them out or like, oh, we've known that they've got raiding forces that are going to hit this town in a week. Let's set a trap for them. How are they losing? (laughs) (laughs) I hadn't even considered that, but you are absolutely right. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is what happens when you retcon something in one of the strangest ways possible. Now, here's an easy fix. Here's how you could easily have fixed this. The time travel thing was a one-off. You had to, you know, get enough power to do it and it required the loss of life and property and the, the, the sacrifice of this like particular item that there's only one of and the time travel only works once and that's your one ticket to try to make things right then you add you add fangs to this because as it stands she can just do this again if soma botches something she can just go back in time and be like hey don't do that by the way bc dubs don't do that or like by the way, do something else instead. Instead of instead of going left down this particular path, oh, go right man. down this path. Problem and solved. Did I zone out <laughs> at the point where she can go back in time? I don't remember this part. All right, in the conversation. <laughs> yes. She she okay, the way it's explained, and I had to look this up because I literally just don't remember the exact way it's explained. She has the ability to send her memories of her current self and everything she knows to past versions of herself in the timeline. And just do it again. She, she can do this infinitely. This is literally her basic magical power. Soma can control a couple of pens and make them right based on his will and interpretation of the material. She gets to just go back in time That's, freely. Oh, Jesus. We're, get, we're getting into like, 
we're getting into like yes. metaphysics at this point, and I don't like it. <laughs> time, time travel, time travel is one of those story elements you have to be careful when you use. It mm-hmm. is so easy to mess everything up, and this is one of those times. Uh, Alicia Elfrieden is quite possibly the most powerful character in anime because no matter what you do. If you don't instantaneously assassinate her with absolutely no knowledge of how you did it, she'll just undo it and undo everything that you've done up to that point because it'll be super easy to track you down and just destroy Except you because you'll literally have no recourse. That that would even work because for all you know, she'll wake up that morning going, oh, so somebody's going to assassinate, you know, somebody's going to put an arrow through my head when I walk through this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this particular room, I know exactly like the the angle, the trajectory, uh, the exact room, time, and place when this happens now, and now I'm ready for them. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one who can stop her. She's unstoppable. <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing you can do. Because, yeah, this, oops, I can move myself. I can basically crazy diamond myself. If you manage to, like, infect her with a poison or a disease, nope, I know exactly when you're going to do that now. Yeah, guards, execute that man over there. Why? Just do it. I'm the queen. You don't, you don't get to tell me no. <laughs> we live in a medieval absolute monarchy because I said so. <laughs> Kill that man right now. He's going to poison me. He has poison on him right now. Oh, man, how'd you know? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like, she's unstoppable. What? Why does? What? What good is Soma? Soma sucks. <laughs> I want to see the story about this crazy, overpowered, unstoppable eldritch abomination of a queen who's really just a weird ara ara who hangs around this doddering old man all the time because she thinks he's cute. <laughs> like, what is this world? <laughs> I actually like this series. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> but this has got the more I think on this, like the more this is like ballooning. Like this one plot point causes so much trouble. <laughs> okay, everyone, in the comments, who can actually stop her? Like, can Saitama stop her? Can does he even have a means of doing? Like, can Goku stop well, her? That, in that, in, I mean, in that case, <laughs> what's Saitama it take? Be able to because she, if she could go as far back as you say, he would get to the point before he was training to stop him before he becomes. Uh, yeah, because you just kill him when he's a normal dude. Goku is a different story. I don't think you can because Goku just comes back. He has like infinite revives because. The heavens just likes him that much. No, I was about to say, he lives in a universe for resurrection. But here's the thing. The resurrection in Dragon Ball is limited. If Kami dies, Earth's Dragon Balls are gone. Or if Dende, now it's Dende. If she like, if she goes back in time when Goku was a kid, kills Goku, then kills Kami, the Dragon Balls are gone. Goku's gone forever. Mm-hmm. End game. She's unstoppable. There's no stopping this woman. <laughs> the, the only way to kill her is if you exist contemporaneously with her but if you do she can just go back before you and so destroy the, you the only way to no one can her stop her is to like kill her parents before she's born <laughs> yeah that's literally all you can do <laughs> you have to just out time travel the time traveler because otherwise it's impossible you lose <laughs> <laughs> Alicia L. Frieden, strongest anime <laughs> character. Debate in the comments now. <laughs> what this is come to at this point. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> She's unstoppable. And, uh, and this is a retcon. Like this is obviously a retcon. This doesn't come to like six or seven novels in. And and she's like, yeah, this is why you were chosen to be king. Rather than like prime minister or, or, or minister of the state or interior or something, something that would have made way more sense. You had to be king because my daughtering husband was too much of an idiot <laughs> and for some reason couldn't just follow my omnipotent, omniscient and she, but she advice. She didn't even need him to follow because she was the one who was actually the monarch. Yeah, he, yeah, he was the king. She also didn't true. Need his- yeah him to sign off on anything. She could just tell people to do shit. So. Yeah. yeah, And and, and they would have been obligated. 
need him to be incompetent. In, she could just like be like, okay, I'm going to summon Soma and then do whatever he says. I, my daughtering, you know, husband that I keep around because he's, he's cute and, you know, he's my eye candy. And I, <laughs> that, that she's like, oh, yes, yes, my, my daughtering hu- husbando. I, I don't need to listen to him. I can just be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go talk to him and we're going to do what he says about national policy. You just, you know, stand over there and, and be cute or, you know, lay down with your head in my lap because that's a thing for some reason. I don't understand, but <laughs> that's, yeah, she's like 30 years younger than him. But she still does the mommy thing, and not that I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm not stupid, but, I mean, <laughs> but more to the point, like, yeah, yeah, she already knows everything, and and she can just redo it as many times as she needs to. She's like this eldritch deity. <laughs> <laughs> like the far-reaching implications of this retcon had not dawned are, on me until right just now, and it completely are changes we the sure flow of this narrative. That it's that the story isn't going to end with like her being some eldritch demon god who just summoned Soma in order into the world in order to like okay take over everything. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've only made it to like volume seven, but looking at the Wikipedia page, it lists the chapter of, of volume 17, which only came out last year, by the way, uh, chapter 17, volume 17, chapter nine, the chapter title is the demon Lord's true identity. And I'm sorry, if it's not the queen, <laughs> then this series has missed a golden opportunity. <laughs> And she would just be like, yeah, I did all this to get my nation back on track because I'm literally that 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 queen who who is like empire before all other stakes. And, and literally every single one of you has just been a pawn in my game. See, that and I be, literally did this because I love be you. Twist. And I'm just... <laughs> and then, but I need to get back into this series. You know what? I, I promise at some point in the future, I'm going to finish out this series. I will collect all 17 novels and read them front to back from one to 17. And I will report back because I have to know now this has gotten so far out of control. I have to know. I have to know who the demon Lord is. Do not spoil it in the comments. Do not tell me if my theory is right or wrong. I'm going to find out myself. And I have to know now. <laughs> We've gone down a strange rabbit hole. On this no, for, forget your, forget your Goku, forget your Superman, forget your Deadpool's and Saitama's. Alicia Elfrieden is the most powerful character in all of fantasy. It doesn't matter that she doesn't have super strength or a god killing sword. She doesn't need any of that. She just will win, and it's all a matter of time. And for her, she has all the time in the world because those memories go back in time to her younger self. She can outlast you no matter what you do. The only way to beat her is to kill her before she even exists. Is it? it, it. Yep. (laughs) That's all you got. That's your only shot. And you have to hope that her mom doesn't have that ability too. If this ability is genetic, you're just. I mean, for all we know, her, her entire matrilineal line is just this. And that they're all like, these eldritch deities and, with this yeah, infinite it's just time like travel. This entire, power. this, this, yeah, that they're all some hive mind, and that when she dies, for all we know, the, the prince, oh my god, the, it's that, just her reincarnating know, herself. Dies, the princess will then get all of her memories, and then. <laughs> oh my god, it's a solar exaltation <laughs> where she retains the memories of her past I incarnations. Gonna, I was That's why she's so smart. She doesn't need it. She already has that, the wisdom of lifetimes. The, way he, the character, the main protagonist, sounds like he's like he's a he's a politi- he's a he, he's a political science major that's called who wants to be a civil servant. And but he gets yeah. Isekai and he's using the power of bureaucracy. And I'm like, is he just an eclipse exalted? <laughs> I mean, like, kind of. That, that's not unfair to be like. I, I, you could easily make an exalt based on Soma, and honestly, you wouldn't have to try because Soma <laughs> doesn't have that much personality to speak of. But like, 
like okay, that, that sounds really mean. Let me let me clarify what I mean. He's a self. He's a character who is not a self insert character of the author. He's meant for the the reader to project upon, because he, he's kind of a blank slate character, and, and he doesn't have like. He has convictions, but they're general convictions. I don't like bad people. I don't like corrupt people. General things. He doesn't have super in-depth compulsions. He doesn't have he doesn't have like JoJo level quirks where, oh, I, I always have to tap a door frame four times when I walk through it for good luck kind of weird things. He's just kind of a blank slate. The reader is supposed to put themselves in his shoes and have lots of, you know, cool hot waifus and weird bro friendships with, with guys like Poncho. So he's, he's kind of supposed to be this everyman character, but I think we just completely recontextualized his relationship with this world. Like he's a pawn. He thinks he's the king. He's the pawn in the queen's game. <laughs> This is my new headcanon. I'd like I'll, I'll I'll report back when I finish this series, and it may take me a while to get to that point. But like, I have to know. <laughs> There's, I have to. And if it's not if it's not the queen, if the queen is not the demon lord who orchestrated all this to put every kingdom back on the straight and narrow, <laughs> I'm gonna write that story myself. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I don't Please even do. care. I'd read that. <laughs> that. Sounds fast. I need to get Dutaku's input on this. I think he'd love this idea. So, okay. Let's put that Pandora's box to the side now that we've opened it and there's nothing we can do about it. (laughs) Like, oh man, that was a kettle of fish I was not expecting to uncover today. (laughs) When When I woke up this morning, I did not think I was going to discover who the strongest character in anime was. So, Putting that aside, a, a thing that, that comes up a lot um, are, in fact, the waifus that I've been talking about so much. And some of them some of them are very organic. Juna and Aisha have a, a very organic chemistry with Soma and, and have very cute interactions. And, and there's some moments of, of genuine, heartfelt character building throughout. And that, that's to the series' credit. I'm absolutely praising the series in that respect. I think the multiple wives thing is a bit of a cop-out. Whatever, I've said my piece on that. But there's times in the series where it gets weird. (laughs) Okay, bear with me while I explain this part. Castor Vargas, the leader of the Air Force, like I've already established, has a daughter. She is a dateru, who is also a waifu. She is a what's called a dragon nude, or or basically a a half-dragon, basically. And after the Civil War ends, and the Dukes are brought in line with as being part of the Royal Guard, his daughter Carla goes kind of ape and tries to kill Soma. I mean, rightfully so at this point. <laughs> kind of makes sense. So she tries that, it fails, and they put a sleeve collar on her, and they start putting her in maid outfits, suggestive maid outfits, and there's this weird implied Stockholm Syndrome thing going on with her it made me uncomfortable i'll be honest didn't like that. yeah no sir that's some weird stuff and that i mean that whole saying her her existence as this half dragon person um opens up a further a further rabbit hole that i don't know if we have time to go down these these rabbit holes Uh oh um <laughs> it well, uh, let's do it. Why not? Her existence as a half dragon, implying that the dragon people and humans can breed, right. so interbreed, and so all these species can interbreed, um, presumably. And the f- yes, yes, that's more or less canon. But like, it's not animals and humans. Mm-hmm. It's always been like this weird, intelligent demi-human thing. The origin of species is not yes. gone into in the series, like at all. Other than demons can't yes. talk. So like, that's that, really the only thing we And know. then the fact that this nation does not have, you know, the, this these cultures practice polygamy. Um, yep. So why does the queen only have one spouse and not... Why haven't all of these these races just, like, have their nobilities be, like, various consorts of the 
the queen. And why isn't that a whole thing where it's like, oh yeah, there's just like all of these political alliances. There's just like all of all of the heads of state of this this nation and all of their major nobles are just they're all just one big marriage and they all just effing left, right, and center. <laughs> it's basically the the British French royal family relationship yes. and how the tree um, doesn't fork. I mean, oh gosh, you just is okay. So hear me out. Is this just hear like me out as I explain my, this? My job because I think we just podcast now just to say something, and then you just go, like, "Oh my god, I didn't think about this," and go on a tangent for another forty-five minutes. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So here's the thing: we're told that polygamy is normal. It, it is legal. It is normal, and it is very common, especially yes. for rulers to do. Because, you know, you want to have an heir. And so it's like, we never see that. The first time it's brought up is when Lisha, Aisha, and Juna are talking to Soma. But the king has one wife. The, the, the eldritch <laughs> demon queen has one husband. The rulers of several other nations are either unmarried or only have one spouse. We never see this in practice. Uh, more than th everyone just becoming a weird amalgamation of everyone else, I think Soma's being set up. I think the girls are like into that idea and are trying to trick him. There's no evidence that polygamy is actually a thing in this world. <laughs> they just tell Soma that because he's the outsider. He has no idea. If, if they told him that, because like one of the things they mentioned is like in this world, they have eight day weeks. That's like a thing in this world. Like it's eight days long. And like, I think it's like, if you go yeah, north, you're, you're moving. You're, if you go north, you're going into the hotter climates. If you go yes. south, you're going into the colder climates. Because that's how this world works. And Soma has no choice but to believe what they're saying. He has no reference. But they tell him, hey, polygamy is normal and accepted and everyone does it. But nobody does. You never see any proof of that. <laughs> I think they're trying to bait him. I mean, yeah, that was kind of my not I, I I can't approach it from a very different angle, given my my background and everything that I Right. I w I was looking at it from a political angle and not from uh a s you know, storytelling perspective. But it's like, yeah, if this was genuinely a thing, we would have seen it a lot with the nobility that like the various dukes they wouldn't just be like dukes they would be like prince consorts they they would be like the secondary yeah. husbandos to the queen but they're not but they're not um it literally never comes up except for when three girls who happen to have a crush on the same guy are like oh yeah. no this is totes normal you should do it it's a honeypot trap, Soma. Don't fall for it. Something terrible is going to happen. <laughs> well, what's what? Well, that was certainly well, the terrible a thing. Weird that's what happens <laughs> is when you know the elder demon god queen dies, and then so all of a sudden his princess waifu is not going to be so into it. Wait, are, are you are you suggesting, good sir? Are you suggesting that among her other powers, Alicia Elfrieden has the power to manipulate other people? No, you're you're suggesting the reincarnation theory, where Alicia is going to become yes, another that, incarnation of Alicia. <laughs> oh my! Yes, God, the world is. Well, I mean, proposed counter theory. This is a shown in action series. The reincarnation process could very well mean that she's still into it and just wants to upgrade to a younger model. Oh no, I I, I fully expect that she'll be upgrading to Soma. I just think that she might not be so down with sharing. Oh wait. Wait, wait, wait. I want to take this, this. Both these rabbit holes converge in one particular way. Are you guys ready for this? Here's next theory. This, this is me in my tinfoil hat. Okay. So, 
that we, we have found a common thread uh, of the immortal reincarnating queen who can go back infinitely down her matriarchal line as much as she wants. Now, she has to live life forwards like a normal pleb because her time magic only works one direction. So she's had this doddering old husbando who she finds very cute, but has largely proven to be completely ineffectual. So she finds in the, the kingdom's history this summoning spell, a summoning spell that's literally only ever worked once. And we don't even really know much about that, at least not at this point, because I need to finish the series. But presuppose that she saw the future by living it in the future where Soma shows up and becomes prime minister. And along the way of her simply trying to figure out the best way to fix her own kingdom and thereby the world, she discovers, hey, he's cute. I could have him. And all it takes is for the old vessel to die and me take the new one. And I can just go back to my old one if anything goes awry. And yeah, I mean, the concept of sharing does come up along the conversation, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> because at that point, she now has a foolproof plan to literally fix everything, get what she wants, get her, her young eye candy in the form of Soma, and, and all she has to do is accept that he's going to have queen consorts along the way, which she has apparently told Licia is totally normal. This, this is more than just a chess master playing 4D chess in order to fix the world. She's setting herself up for generations of a huge everlasting family where the matriarchal line is guaranteed to continue. One of those girls is going to have a daughter at some point in the process. Therefore, who's to say that it has to be a blood relative to, to, for her to possess them and continue being the eternal queen? This is not the direction at all that I thought that this conversation would go down <laughs> when we started. Not with like this particular rabbit hole, but just like talking about this this show. I expect you to be talking an awful lot more about <laughs> politics. <laughs> I I did too, to be fair. But now that I'm here, I think I need to write this. This this weird hyper this manipulator who's a complete control freak and has to secure her own destiny because her power just lets her try again like she has save states at every single waking moment of her entire existence and she can just do it infinitely ad nauseum no limits mm -hmm. nothing if she makes any mistake during a speech she can rewind five seconds Nope, that mistake didn't just happen. I did my speech flawlessly. <laughs> what? Demons have invaded? Okay, I'm just going to keep looping until I get everything right so that I set up everything to work in my favor. What? I need a, another body to, to like reincarnate into to continue my ultimate gambit? Well, it's simple. I'll simply get my daughter and all of her besties to marry the same guy, and it's guaranteed to work eventually. If not, I always have the trusty rewind button. Right, I think you've, yes, invented your own isekai that will be something like, I think my <laughs> girlfriend's mom is the demon lord, and she's into me. <laughs> my mother-in-law is a demon yes. lord, and she has the hots for me. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone a very okay, strange so direction. I'm you, you are correct, sir. When this, when this uh, podcast goes up, and then it gets taken down. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we somehow uh, expose all of their plans and we're all being hunted by them. <laughs> the author's the, the author's name is not not the actual name. It's actually Alicia Elfrieden, and she's trying to to hide her own wrongdoing behind. Yeah, I'm trying to Dojo Maru. Dojo Maru is listed as the author. It is not impossible that Dojimaru is a pin name for Alicia Elfrieden. And now that we have cracked the code, we are all in danger. <laughs> if we mysteriously vanish, mm -hmm. we warned you. We warned you in the only way we could. And also, it might already if be this doing. podcast gets copyright struck anywhere, this is canon. <laughs> yep. That, that will just be verification of everything that we discussed today. 
Soma is just a schmuck who is convenient. Because think about it. This goes deep. Soma has no living family members. The rest of his family died before the story starts. He has very few friends, so no one would go looking for him in the event he went missing. He's from Japan. If someone goes missing in Japan, if the case can't be solved, the police generally don't investigate it. It's the perfect crime. Alicia could take him, be like, okay, he's the perfect specimen. He's young. He's athletic. He's intelligent. He's the perfect person to, 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 to have the children that will carry on the Demon Queen's ultimate eldritch line. Everything she's done has been calculated from the word go, maybe before the word go, because she doesn't have that limit. The conspiracy starts here, people. <laughs> All right, I think we have gone on long enough. This has gotten out of hand and not in the way that anyway, I expected. Anyway, this is a very good series not in, <laughs> no, not in the way that I like this series <laughs> <laughs> we okay to, to be fair it's a good series I need to get back to to, to, to reading it because oh, I enjoy I, it it's really fun it, it's dumb in places and the politics are, are dumb like Noodle has been ranting about oh but it's good I, I, I was not at all being facetious there it's a good it's a good series. Yeah. It's not a good series in the way that it tries to be good. I knew that before. It it is not a good series That's true. of oh, let, let's look at how this person solves this fantasy world's problems with real real politics. No. None of that would actually work. <laughs> if you thought about that for even half a minute. But when yep. you think about the deeper implications of the thing that's going on, <laughs> everything yeah. kind of comes together in the so most you, terrifying you need to way it possible. In, I think one of two ways, and that is don't think about anything, just watch it and laugh and go, huh, that was clever. Or you massively overthink it like we did today. And come up with ridiculous theories about how the queen is secretly an eldritch god and trying to set herself up with her perfect husbando. Everything. Everything is part of the conditioning, people. We, we tried to warn you. I'm going to go back to watching Dodd. I, I mean... <laughs> 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 which I don't, which is I don't believe is I don't believe it's fully and, and, uh, fully an East guy. I'm just making that joke because it's the only other thing I can think of next to Long Horizon and the others. <laughs> I'm gonna go back yeah, to yeah. watching Sword Art. I don't have to think about anything. <laughs> it, just turn your brain just, off just, and embrace. Just the turn dumb. your brain off and that look is at Sword the, Art. The shiny sh sword lasers. This. Just it's sword, sword lasers. lasers. It's fun. It's fun. It's dumb, but it's fun. Dumb, um, but it's fun. Yeah, exactly. And pr pray that the queen doesn't find this podcast <sighs> and try to delete us all from history. But yes, yeah. Before we close, so, I just like to point out that yes, <laughs> if this is taken down anywhere, this is canon. <laughs> yes it is <laughs> alright so this has been the hipster snack clockwork and noodle thank you for joining me on what was probably the most unexpected episode of this podcast <laughs> ever I my sole regret in today's conversation was the other Tomo Bros were not here to witness it <laughs> as it was happening <laughs> because Wow. Just wow. So, uh, I'm going to let you guys do the sign-off first. Clockwork, your final gauge of what we've been talking oh, about. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to fight the streets after this, I'll be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, I mean, I'm That's, fair. This That's fair. 
I'm, I'm, washing your hands of this I'm and walking away I'm might be the only way like, to this survive. This is a really, really good anime. Proceeds to completely crap on it and come up with an insane <laughs> series for the past whatever two hours has has been. Hey guys, I still yeah. like it. It's still really, really. I still good for what I think it is. No. <laughs> okay. I, point point taken. <laughs> I, I I respect that. And uh, if it's not your cup of tea, I, I, I totally get it. But uh, the flaw, the flaws prove the diamond is real. That's what I will say. Uh, noodle song. Yeah, I, I like the show, and now I have an appreciation for it that I didn't have before. <laughs> um, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or whether I'm now cursed with knowledge and that I'm going to go to bed tonight and get. <laughs> Stabbed by some eldritch god, <laughs> um, <laughs> or kidnapped and manipulated maybe. as part of her game. Maybe Not this impossible. was all part of her plan. So, if I don't, us discovering yes, the plan was part if of I her plan. Disappear and I never Party. show up on another podcast ever again, dear listeners. You know why? <laughs> That's right. Thank you for for, for uh, being a, a sounding board and someone who has given me a newfound and unexpected appreciation of the series. That I, to be fair, I, I liked the series. It, politically, it's dumb, but if you don't think about that, it's a lot of fun. And please, Almighty Eldritch God Queen, please have mercy on my soul. <laughs> this is the Hipster's Neck and the Tomodachi Bros, and we are signing off for now. See you guys in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, and, and definitely leave a comment down below <laughs> singing the praises of the Eldritch God Queen. May she reign eternally and uninterrupted for all time to come. Thank you for listening to the Tomodachi Brothers Review Podcast. Produced and recorded by The Hipster Snack, Ditaku, and Cog. Sound design and editing by executive producer Sean Taylor Brown with Cog Sound Engineering. Music written and performed by Sean Taylor Brown with Costas Voss of Core Insight Studio on the drums. We hope you enjoyed this episode. See you next time.